Hi, this is CS3220 Introduction to Scientific Computing, or at least this is a video of CS3220 Introduction to Scientific Computing. I'm David Bindel, the professor of this course, and this semester I'm trying a little experiment. Usually I would be giving this spiel standing in front of the class on the first day, and I'll give a modified version of this spiel standing in front of the class on the first day. But this semester I intend to spend most of my class time answering your questions, or if you don't have questions, asking you questions, and working through homework and doing things like that rather than simply lecturing. Lectures I'm going to leave to a series of short 5 to 15 minutes, I hope, videos, of which this is the first. This is sort of a meta video. It's going to explain what my goals are for this sequence of videos and how I think you can get the most out of these things. If you Google Confessions of a Reformed Lecturer, you'll find a very interesting YouTube video, about 80 minutes long, uh, which is a talk given by Eric Majur of the Physics Department of Harvard University. Professor Majur taught introductory physics for a long time and was considered a very good lecturer. And then one day, one of his colleagues told him, you know, students aren't learning anything from your lectures. Now, this was not a welcome piece of news, as you might imagine. Um, but this colleague actually had an instrument to prove his point. This force concept inventory is a way of measuring how much conceptual knowledge students have of physics. And by giving the force concept inventory at the beginning and at the end of the course, uh, Mazur was able to determine that most of the students really hadn't learned very much physics. Part of the reason for this, he decided or determined, was that he was lecturing and students don't really get engaged with the material through lecturing. And so he became a proponent of peer instruction, students teaching each other through doing problems, doing exercises in class. Peer instruction is just one of a variety of active learning techniques, and we're going to be trying some of these things. But, you know, I'm not really a completely reformed lecturer. I still like to talk, as many professors do, uh, and I still think there's some value to having somebody speak rather than just reading. Uh, we process information through different channels differently. But at the same time, I remember the movie Real Genius with the young Val Kilmer back in the 80s. Uh, and I remember this montage at the beginning of the movie in which the protagonist, this earnest young freshman at a, a mythical version of Caltech, is sitting at first in a large lecture hall surrounded by his peers with everybody scribing down the words of the professor. And then there's a quick cut to the next scene in which there's the young protagonist and, and many of his buddies, and uh, there's also a lot of tape recorders, and everybody is recording the words of the professor, but the tape recorders are doing the job of many of the students. And the next scene, it's just the one student surrounded by a sea of tape recorders and the professor in front. And then in the next scene, it's just the student with a professor as well replaced by a tape recorder. I've felt like that sometimes. Uh, I'm sure that you have as well. So that's what we're trying to avoid. And what do I want instead? Well, what I would really like is for you to watch the videos and read the book ahead of class so that there's a basis in which we can have a discussion. The book is a pretty good book. It's a first course in numerical methods by Yuri Asher and Ken Greif, and is published by SIAM, the Society for Industrial and Applied Math. Now, SIAM offers a discount to students who are engaged in a class uh, that uses this as a textbook, uh, and you are such students if you are in my class. Uh, so if you are in the class and uh, didn't buy the book already, uh, and didn't receive my email about the discount, please contact me and I'll give you the code for the discount.
So after you've watched the videos and read the book, I hope you'll try some problems. Ideally, you'll try some homework problems, assuming that I'm on the ball enough to get them to you early. Uh, and if not, try some problems from the end of the book. Then get confused. This is usually what happens when you try problems for the first time. Uh, and then come to class and get unconfused. Get yourself straightened out, help your peers. If you happen not to have ever been confused, then you can just come to class and help your peers and show what a smart guy you are. Um, in any event, I think we'll have more fun during our class time that way. And if you do get confused and feel like lecture is actually helpful, you can go back and watch these videos more than once. That's all I have to say. Welcome to CS3220 again, and I hope to see you in class.